Negli Stati Uniti è in corso una sfida non dichiarata ma palese. In the United States there is a challenge, not declared but clear. The goal is to build the largest center console and I think that it is this shipyard, Marine Technology Incorporated, that is winning with its 57 footer. Hey, sono qua giù. Hey, I'm down here. Have you seen how long it is? 17 meters and 37 centimeters of open hull. Crazy. Guardate che pozzetto. Look at the cockpit, how big it is, and it is equipped with every kind of comfort. If you want, there is also the XSF version, equipped for fishing. The T-top has a strange flap and leans on the sides, so it protects the cockpit. The designer has not been content to just give his own style to this boat, but he has also created forms such as these flares and niches to make it comfortable. Il posto di pilotaggio è in perfetto stile MTI. The pilot station is in perfect MTI style. A multi-level footrest so that everyone can find the right position according to their size. A close dashboard with extension of the rudder and comfortable engine controls. Close and another farther away to accommodate a huge display. Anche questa chaise longue è un marchio di fabbrica. Also, this chaise longue is a MTI trademark, very anatomical, to stay seated here, even in navigation. And this, you can bring me a cocktail, please. But that's not all. There is still an area here in the bow. Adesso... And now, direction, Max, a little music, because I take you to the club. What a boat, 17.37 meters long, fantastic. It is 363 centimeters wide and weighs just 9,500 kilograms. How is this possible? It's a huge difference compared to other boats of the same size. Everything comes from competitions. Sappiamo che le barche da corsa devono essere leggere per correre veloci, ma devono anche essere robuste. We know that racing boats must be lightweight for speed, but they must also be strong. Here, the same technologies that we use to race and win in class one, they also use to make their pleasure craft. And so let's see how this boat is built. Intanto la struttura del tipo sandwich. The structure is of the sandwich type, which means that between the two layers of fiberglass, there is a core polyurethane foam that simply takes the shape of the structure, so you also get the necessary rigidity. But what matters most is the materials and the construction methods. They use epoxy resin, the best existing infused vacuum. It's not enough. They joined the deck with Kevlar to give even more strength to the hull. All this is then baked in the oven. Yes, we are not at MasterChef, but it is as if we were. Yes, the best quality of these products is obtained only when they are cooked or hardened. In this way, the materials do not only become more robust, but more stable over time. The superstructure, which is this T-top, is then made entirely of carbon to be even lighter and to not raise the center of gravity. There are other elements of carbon, both on the deck and below deck. 
but they have a more aesthetic purpose, rather than actually lightening the construction in itself, as we have seen already with an excellent weight-power ratio. On this model, we have four 400 horsepower Mercury engines. But will it be enough for a boat like this? Well, just think, the shipyard says you can even use just two engines. I don't think anyone who buys such a large, majestic hull which costs roughly a million and a half dollars, excluding accessories, would be satisfied with only two outboards. If you want even more power, you can also mount four 627 horsepower engines. But be careful because the modification, engines aside, costs $300,000. So let's see if this configuration satisfies us enough. We are at a speed of 25 knots. The engines at this moment are all lined up at 3,000 rpm and fuel consumption is 4 litres per mile. I noticed that, to begin planing, I did not have to use the flaps. Of course, they are not there. In fact, it begins ascending on its own, gliding on the water. The hull was designed in a particular way. It could not be otherwise, given the yard's racing experience. It has two very profound steps and another four just mentioned. What is the purpose of these geometries? To make it smoother. In fact, think that such a large hull has, I think, almost 50 square meters of surface in contact with the water. What does that mean? It means that it is practically glued to the water. Take a sheet of paper, place it on a table. If you want to move it, just blow. Wet that sheet. How much strength does it take to move it? To detach it from the table, to slide it. Very much. Here's what water does on a hull. It glues it. MTI has found the solution to detach it from the water, and it works. We're at 30 knots, the engine's at 3,800 rpm, all perfectly synchronized, and the fuel consumption is 5 litres per mile. Very smooth. There is a lot of wind transverse, at least 30 knots. Look at the rudder. You don't even need to touch it. The boat keeps its course perfectly. And now, I'll explain why. In the meantime, I'll give some more gas. Let's go at at least 35 knots. And now I'll give a little bit of trim. Without touching the accelerator, bringing the trim from zero to 20%. I'm up to 39 knots. I still haven't touched the rudder. It's always in the same position. This boat runs on tracks. Why? Because MTI, which won European and World Championships with catamarans, has invented a very special hull. MTI has combined the shapes of the catamarans, which we know have two hulls and a central tunnel, with that of deep V hulls, digging a tunnel into the V's summit. And it is this form that keeps the core so well, so perfectly. And that's not all. This is the form that also allows you to make impeccable turns, very precise, without any corrections. Watch.
come può accadere tutto questo? È piuttosto semplice. Una carena a V. How can all this happen? It's quite simple. A V-shaped hull, when you're turning, rests its side on the water, and in practice the hull becomes flat. Instead, this hull, with the tunnel, when it is turning, supports a corner on the water. And it's that corner that makes it run as if it were on a track. We could say that this boat is driven only with the accelerator, not with the rudder. Now I widen my area a bit because there is the support boat, the one with our crew. I just said that this boat only drives with the gas. Is it true? Yes, it's true, with all the gas. Trim at 20%, now at 25%. Engines, 5,000 RPM, 5,700. 5,800, 5,900. Speed, huh? it's increasing. Oh, fantastic. Fifty-eight knots. I didn't believe that 1,600 horses could make such a large boat go so fast. This is the result of the technology and capabilities of Marine Technology Incorporated.